Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Euroman Movie Report. The show where I talk about a movie I have recently watched at my local movie theatre. This week I'm going to talk about a not that well-known movie, Kursk. Kursk, and no, it's not based upon uh, the 1940s tank battle between the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. No, it's about the sinking of the Russian submarine back in 2000, and this sub was of course named the Kursk. And um, for the, those of us who were alive back in 2000, as young adults, I was 19, and uh, I remember that uh, it was reported on the news that uh, the Russians were unable to um, raise this up themselves and uh, unable to rescue their own submariners and they all died. And what this movie does is of course it dramatizes the events before the, the last voyage of the Kursk uh, and some of the events leading up to the failed uh, rescue of the stranded submariners and a, a small part of the events after uh, it was uh, learned that they all had all died. And um, the film begins, uh, I guess, maybe 24 or 48 hours before the last voyage of the Kursk, and we see the main characters uh, who are officers and board the, the submarine. That one of those uh, guys, he's getting married, and yeah, <laughs> and there's a scene in the beginning of the film uh, where we are told by Pedro uh, that, oh, sorry, we haven't received any money from Moscow, so you won't get paid this week. Uh, and that's, of course, very upsetting to uh, the officers, because especially that one of the guys is getting married. So what they, they do is that um, they all uh, take off their submariner watches and um, uh, give them as collateral so they can go out and buy the Russians' most favorite drink, vodka, for the wedding. And they have a very, yeah, heartwarming party. Uh, and uh, they go, and are very drunk. And the um, next day the submarine is uh, sent off on its voyage. And um, the main character, just have to look him up here, was it Anton or Oleg or uh, I guess that's where some of the names, um, I just have to look it up here. Uh, he of course is uh, alone with um, uh, his friends on board the ship, but he has a family. And he, uh, Mikhail of course, uh, and he's um, uh, married to um, this uh, woman. Tanya, played by this uh, very uh, French actress, uh, Lea Sudo, uh, but he, she, you can't see that. It is her, so my uh, thumbs up to the makeup, makeup department, uh, because she looks very... Uh, uh, and, um, yeah, um, I must say that regarding uh, the setting in the beginning of the film, uh, this is supposed to take place in 2000, and if, if that's how uh, that part of Russia looks, it was almost like going 30 years into the past, because it looked like the freaking 1970s. Um, so basically, a shithole. But, um, yeah, uh, Mikhail, uh, he of course has um, uh, this uh, son, uh, little son, uh, yeah, what's it, what's he, seven, nine, nine years old, and he wants to be a diver uh, or something like that because in the beginning of the film we see can, he can hold his breath for 57 seconds and I guess he gets that from his father because later in the film you can see that his father he can hold his breath for two minutes so uh, yeah I guess it runs in the family uh, and um, yeah but it these officers they are really tight-knit and uh, that uh, comes into play uh, immediately after the accident and the accident being that a test torpedo blows up in the torpedo depart, uh, compartment of the, the submarine and um, kills most of the crew and uh, all the other torpedoes in the, the torpedo uh, part of the, the, the submarine they blow up as well but uh, Mikhail and uh, his friends they um, 
seek shelter in the port uh, of the Kursk, and they basically survive there uh, for several days. Meanwhile, back in the UK, uh, we have Colin Thurst, who, yeah, he, he, he plays this typical British um, naval officer, and he's of course based upon a real, uh, real um, person. Uh, and the, the British, they detect uh, the, the explosion uh, and um, they find out that it is a, is a Russian submarine which has gone down. And uh, they offer the Russians uh, help, but uh, the Russians being how they are, uh, uh, or were, and still are, they don't want any help uh, because, yeah, Russia was basically falling apart back then. <laughs> and some would claim that it still is, but yeah. And, um, yeah, the movie, of course, then follows uh, back and forth. We have the people on land, uh, the families of the submariners, uh, the Russian Navy personnel trying to save the, the submariners, and um, then we have um, Colin Smith uh, trying to, as representative of the West, trying to offer his assistance. But, uh, yeah, um, Max von Sydow who plays this senior uh, Russian Navy Admiral. Uh, oh, we don't want any help. Uh, we will let you know if we can, uh, if we want your help, and so on and so on. And, um, yeah, and of course, when we are shown that uh, uh, the Russian Navy was, of course, in a very sorry state back then because their only rescue submarine, the robber uh, seal, uh, it didn't work, so the Russians were unable to save their own submariners and they didn't want any help uh, from foreign nations, so, yeah, they all drowned. Um, the movie itself, um, Thomas Winterberg, he, he um, in the beginning of the film, he um, starts with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, then switches to a 16 by 9 and then back to a 4 by 3 uh, aspect ratio. Uh, I don't know why he does that. It's my first Thomas Winterberg film. But I guess it has some deeper meaning. The acting, like um, the, the French actress who played uh, the wife of Michel and the, the other women, uh, they did a very uh, good job with um, their parts. And uh, the actors like Matthias Schonard, who played Michel, and um, uh, and Max von Solo, he, he, even though his role is very short, he, they did a good job. And, and August Diel, who we, we have a German actor who we played Anton, who we have seen in other films, so mostly playing a German, he did a good job as well. And so did the other actors who portrayed the Russian officers. And uh, as you can hear, um, some you can spin this movie uh, as much as uh, you like. I spin it one way, but. I guess some other folks would spin it a uh, second or third way, but basically these guys, they um, lived on only their, their friendship and their pride and their wits, and they were let down by the folks who were supposed to have their back, and that was the most horrific part of this here, is that so they, were, they were killed because, um, yeah, the Russian state didn't want to lose face. So, um, but that's a whole other more complex discussion of the, the times back then. So, but regarding the, this as a film, it, it's, um, yeah, it's a heartwarming tale of you know, people in an impossible situation and knowing that they were going to die, they want, they, we see that they did their best to, yeah, come to terms with, with the situation that they were in uh, and um, it, it's a good film and if you like dramas I'm, su I'm sure you, you would enjoy the Kursk uh, especially if you like a drama with a political undertone. So all in all if I'm gonna write uh, the Kursk uh, I will give it three out of five that's it, you're a man of your man's movie report. Thanks for watching, and don't forget if you like this movie talk slash movie review, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch my previous reviews slash movie talks, you can click a link in the description, which will take you to a playlist of previous reviews slash movie talks.
But I will return next week with another movie review slash movie talk. Until then, have a pleasant weekend and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.